John chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 19, we're going to move down to verse 21. Lord God, the Father does ask you to bless this time. Help us, Lord God, to exalt Jesus Christ. Lord God, to thank you for your many blessings, Lord, yet there's still blessings in our life, Lord God. I just lift up uh, Roberto, Lord God, help him and steady him, Lord God, and work on his heart, Lord, and be with us now. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. All right, John, chapter 19. And this is the record. This is, you know what a record is. This is the facts of John. When the, this is with John the Baptist. When the Jews sent the priest, the Levites, we looked at that last week, from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Now remember, John's in the River Jordan. And they send people from Jerusalem to the River Jordan where John is, hey, who, who are you? What are you doing? What's your credentials? Where's your diploma? What on earth are we hearing you're doing? That's what they're doing. And he confessed and denied not, but it confessed, I am not the Christ. I'm not Jesus, John said. And they asked him, say, what then? And we're going to look at this. Art thou Elias? He said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? We'll look at that a little bit later. He said, no. So, the nation of Israel is looking for the Messiah. And they know by the, and we'll look at it, but they know before the Messiah shows up, they know Elias, Elias, Elijah. It's supposed to show up. Like we know Jesus is coming with the rapture. There are signs. We don't know when. But we know we're getting there. We know we're getting closer and closer. So when they say, here's this guy doing this thing in, in, in the river of Jordan, who, who, do you, who do you think you are? What's going on here? So let's look at Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, just before, just before Matthew. It was, Matthew did, uh, it was Malachi did Matthew, so the last book in the Old Testament. And Malachi chapter 4. Bible return. Not my study Bible. A lot of these pages have not been opened. Right. Malachi chapter four, verse two. Oh, the pages are folded over. We're going to look at why are they looking for a light. Malachi chapter four, verse two. But unto you, nation of Israel, that fear my name, shall the Son, capital S, of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. He shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. There is Jesus, the Son, capital S. There he is. Verse 4. I mean, yeah, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. So they knew the Messiah is coming. Malachi 4, 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I command unto him at Horeb, for all Israel, Israel, the statutes and judgments. Here's Moses. Here's Lord Jesus Christ. Here's Moses, the Messiah and Moses. Moses is showing up. They say, are you that? He goes, are you Elias? He says, no. Are you that prophet? We're going to look, we'll look at that a little bit in a few weeks to come. But that prophet is Moses. I'll tell you right now. Because no, I'm not that prophet. So they're looking for the Messiah, and they're looking for Moses. Verse number 5, verse chapter 4. This is it. Behold, I will send you Elijah, or Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Are you Elias? Is this the day, the dreadful day of the Lord? That's what they want to know. Because before the Messiah comes, Malachi said, Moses and Elijah are supposed to show up. 
Now, when we go further reading, we'll look at later on. We're not looking at that now. We're going to see Moses and Elijah show up in the tribulation. There are two prophets that show up. And what's, the, what's that great and dreadful day? That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. That jumped all the way to the second coming. We're, we're, we're in John. We haven't come to the first coming of Jesus yet. Jesus was just born. John is the forerunner. So he says, I will send you Elijah. The son of righteousness is Jesus, the Messiah. But they're looking for Elijah. Because they know once Elijah shows up, the Messiah is coming. What's the Jewish people going to know in the tribulation period? Well, here's Elijah and Moses. They're preaching, they're teaching, they're turning the water into blood, and they're stopping the rain. And when they get the scriptures, they'll find out seven years, the tribulation is long. Then they're going to be looking for, for the Messiah. Now, there's Elijah. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bunny trail here of meat. And we're going to look at the scriptures with Elijah. Now this week we're going to look at some scriptures. Next week, Lord willing, we're going to look at Elijah, the man. But Elijah, who is this? Who is this guy that's supposed to show up? Now Elijah has his own period of the Bible. Or his parts of the Bible. And what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at what is the Old Testament and why is the Old Testament? How come? Why are these books not in the Old Testament? <coughs> and why are these books not in the Old Testament? That's exactly what we're going to look at today. So let's take our Bibles to Matthew 5, 17. Next, next book over. Matthew 5, 17. We're going to look at the divisions of the Old Testament books. This is me. And this should explain, well, why is this in there? Why is this not in there? In Matthew 5, 17. We'll start off. Jesus speaking. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but fulfill. Now that's important. Now you're thinking the law. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. That's not, well that's the law. That's not the law that Jesus is talking about. Am I here to, to, to kill the prophets? That's not the prophets that Jesus is talking about. And what he's told you here is that there is two divisions right now in the Old Testament. There's a division called the law, and there's a division called the prophets. And there are three divisions we're going to look at in the Old Testament. And we'll get on with it. Matthew 7, 12. Matthew 7, 12. And this is meat we're getting into. And I got, and I got a handout to hand to you, keeping your Bible for reference later to help you out. Even though there's a misspelling on it. I printed it all out, and then my spell checker said, You spelled that word wrong. After I printed them out. Thank you. Uh, 7, verse 12. Jesus again speaking. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you. Ye even so to them, for this is the law, part one, and the prophets, part two. And what he's talking about is the Old Testament. We'll look at that in a moment. 11.13, Matthew 11.13. Again, this is Jesus speaking. We're not specifically looking at the law as far as the commandments and the statute. We're looking at the law as a division of the Old Testament and the prophets, a division of the Old Testament. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John. 
the Old Testament canon, the Old Testament division comes up to the period where we are now, John is baptizing. Now, the Old Testament does not finish because the testament is the death of a testator, like I said last week, the will. The last will and testament. You can't touch my will until I'm dead. So actually, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not your New Testament books until Jesus died. They're Old Testament. At the moment Jesus says it is finished and gives up the ghost, at that moment it becomes now the New Testament. Christ has died. The will is in effect. God's will is now in effect. And then we move on to grace and we move on to the church age. So there's that two divisions of the Bible. The law and the prophets. Matthew 22, 40. And as you can see, Jesus spoke often on what we're looking at. And he's speaking to the people that know the Old Testament. And as Gentiles and Christians, we've we got to learn this. This is important. Because this is the Old Testament we're talking about. And two divisions right now, there are three. But in Matthew 22, 40... And we'll look at verse 37, Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Okay, that's written in the law. That's the law. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang the law and the prophets. Those two things. The Old Testament. Hang on the law of the prophets. Now Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, 24, 44. 24, 44. Now, in this, Luke, 24, 44, we're going to see the three divisions, if I may call it, of the Old Testament. In Luke 24, 44, he said unto them, Jesus, this is Jesus, these are the words, I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written as the law of Moses, number one, the law of Moses, number one. In the prophets, number two. And in the Psalms, number three. There's just three divisions, and we'll look at them. Don't, don't worry, I don't know what you're talking about. We'll look at them in a moment. But there's just three divisions. There's the law, and the law is Matthew. I'm just, yeah. The law is. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And then you got the prophets, and you got Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then you got the minor prophets. What is Psalms? Psalms is Psalms, Ruth, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and I'll give you the list in a moment, and I got it printed out for you. The Old Testament is divided amongst the Law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, which is called the poetry book. Those are the three only divisions of the Old Testament. And if you were to go ask any rabbi anywhere, conservative or um, orthodox, yeah, that's the division of our, our Bible. Without the New Testament at all, they don't believe the Old Testament. So, Luke 16:16. 16, 16. Luke 16:16. 16, 16. It's so breezy when we study your Bible. It's hard to turn the pages, bro. Luke 16:16. 16, 
16, 16. We missed, I missed this one, but go back. Again, Jesus says, the law and the prophets were unto John. So, since John comes along, anything that comes up after John, proclaiming to be an Old Testament, is not so. And we'll look at some books that are not so. Alright. So, we have the law, we have the prophets, and we have the psalm. John 145. 145. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 45. And what we're looking at, we're looking at the Old Testament. Philip finds Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him, Jesus, the Messiah, of whom Moses in the law, part one, and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So, two divisions of the Bible, the law of Moses and the prophets. What did Nathaniel, uh, what did Philip say to Nathaniel? When you read the law and you read the prophets, you're going to read about Jesus. And guess what? What the prophets and what Moses said about Jesus, the Messiah, we found it. So Jesus, the Messiah, is scriptural and bound. Acts 13, 15. Right after John, the book of Acts. Acts chapter 13, verse 15. Kind of a short study, but it's got some meat. Now, our Bible is laid out by the Holy Spirit, and our last book of our Bible, the Old Testament, is Malachi. That's not the last book of the Jewish writing. The last book of, of, of the Jewish, but their Bible is Chronicles. They have a different order to suck. Prescribed by ours, but ours is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So is the Jewish Bible. But it's, and we'll look at that, it's much different from our Bible. In the layout. But there's this principle. In Acts chapter 13, verse 15. After the reading of the law. So they picked up the law of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the prophets, the major prophets, they call the major prophets, prophets or the minor prophets. So in synagogue, they would pick up and say, okay, open, we're going to read out of Deuteronomy. That's the law. And out of the prophets, we're going to read out of Nahum. Or Jonah. Or Isaiah. That's the division. The rulers of the synagogue. So that's what they did. That's what they do in the synagogue today. They'll read parts of Moses, and then they'll read parts of the of the uh, the prophets, and then they'll expound to the congregation. They do that still today. Acts twenty four fourteen, like we're doing right now. We're looking at scripture. We're reading the scripture. And then the scripture is being interpreted, interpreted to what it means. Point is, they they proclaim the Messiah hasn't come yet, though he has. Acts twenty four fourteen. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Believing all the things were written in the law and in prophets. See that division. So now when you're reading through your Bible and, and you, you, uh, when you see the law and the prophets, I want you now to say, oh, that's the Old Testament. That's not the, the regulations as per se, you know, i got to build a, a battlement around my roof. That's Moses and that's all the prophets. That's the division. 
I want you to know that now. 2835. Acts 2835. So if somebody comes up to you and said, well, 25? 23. 28, 23, it's going to say. 28, 23. And when they had appointed him a day, they came many to him his lodging, to whom they found and testified the kingdom of God, persuading that concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning to evening. What Paul's doing, Paul has settled himself in Rome. There's no really New Testament written yet. So how is he preaching Jesus to the, the Jewish people? He's got the writings of Moses and he's got the writings of the prophets. And using Moses' writing and using the prophets, he's preaching to the Jews. Hey, you see what this says right here? You see what Isaiah says right here? That's your Messiah. So you can witness Jesus having the Old Testament, especially to Jewish people. Because that's what we're to do. I want to get you correctly. So what we have is we have we have the three divisions of the Bible. Now, we read the law of Moses. That's called the Torah. You ever hear the word Torah? That is the writings of Moses. That means teaching. That is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those five first books, that's the Torah. So when you hear someone say, well, the Torah, you mean Moses. And those are the books authored by Moses. Then we have the writings. I don't know if you heard this word, but the cat you I don't know if you heard that. These are the poetic books. This is number two division of the Old Testament. Psalms. Psalms is a poetic book, but it's not written by many. Prophets in all kinds of things. It's classified to the Jewish people as poetic. And there is poetry. It's a song book. Proverbs. Job. Even though Job's got prophecy, it's still, it's, it's considered poetic. Song of Solomon, that is a beautiful poem book. Yet, it has prophecy in them. And we were told by the scriptures, Jesus are in the scriptures. But this is the classification. Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Daniel. You say, isn't Daniel... They got it as poetry. But there is some big chunks of meat in Daniel. Ezra is a historian. And a lot of these po there's poetry books, and one of the most, most, yeah, most reasons they are in the poet because they have a lot of in-depth of history. And you've got to know, you know Daniel's going to happen again. Daniel spoke about the tribulation. Ezra, they're going to come back to Jerusalem and they're going to rebuild that temple one of these days. I don't know if we're going to see it. Nehemiah and Chronicles. Now you say, wait a minute. Was that first or second chronicle? The Jewish Bible, there's no first and second chronicle. It's chronicle. There's no first, second Samuel. It's Samuel. There's no first, second Kings. It's king. Our Bible divided. Now we have the Navi. I don't know if you heard that word. Navi is the prophets. So when we read Moses and the prophets, we're talking about the Torah, and we're talking about the Navi. And the Navi or the prophets is Joshua, Judges, Samuel, put together, one and two. Kings, put together, 1 and 2. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. You say, well, what about the others? 
We call them the minor prophets. The Jewish people call them the twelve. Nahum, Habakkuk, and all that, they make up the twelve. They are listed in the Navin, the prophets. But they're, they're, they're grouped together, all together, but there are three divisions. So when you read Jesus and you read in the book of Acts, as we have said, uh, the book of Moses and the prophets, you're talking about two divisions of the Bible. Now i got a list here, you can keep in your Bible. And, uh, I'll give it to you, I don't want to blow away. Now, there are some Bibles, and this is where the word is spelled wrong, they got what they call the Apocrypha. You find them in the Catholic and some Protestant Bibles. These are not Scripture. They are not canonized by the Holy Spirit. They are extra books that belong in a bookshelf in the garbage can. They are the First and Second Ezra's, Tobit, Judith, the rest of Esther, Wisdom. I think this Bible has this, and others. I don't even pay attention to them. Ecclesiastes, Barak, and the Epistle, the Epistle of Jeremy. Now you say, wait a minute. Why, why is the Epistle, yeah, the Epistle of Jeremy? Isn't that the Bible? Well, let's look what the Bible says. Matthew 2.17. And this is where they, get, they came up with the Epistle of Jeremy. Matthew chapter 2. And what they did was they added something that didn't need to be added. And they didn't read their Bible. Matthew 2.17. And they're going to take Matthew 2.17 out of context and give you the epistle, the epistle of Jeremy. By what the Bible did not say. Now ready? Matthew 2.17. Then was, spoke, then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah there is a voice heard, lamentations, weeping, great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children. You can't find verse 18 anywhere in the Bible. Why not? What did it say? Did it say Jeremy wrote it or did he spoke it? It said he spoke it. You know what they went and did? Well, we checked the Old Testament. We can't find that. So we came up with our own book that, that this is what Jeremiah said, that Jesus said. Jesus didn't say he wrote it down. Jesus said he spoke it. Or it wasn't Jesus speaking. Uh, I forget who spoke it. So what they did is, we'll help God out by coming up with a book that is not a book. And listen, there's plenty of things that we said, haven't we? And it wasn't written down. Haven't you ever said something that no one wrote it down? And it's like you saying, well, you know, you're talking to your friend and it was a boat. You know, I sat down with a, with a pad of paper and I, Ron spoke to his friend about a boat. Well, I'm going to tell you what his, his friend said. I wasn't there. I came up with a complete lie. That's what they just did. 27.9, Matthew 27.9. I'm telling you, these Bible correctors are phony baloney. And they got more holes than Swiss cheese. And what they will go do to correct God. You imagine, I can't even imagine somebody correcting God. Imagine what God were, well God, that's not what you really meant to say. Whoa. Matthew 27, verse 9. It was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet. It didn't say he wrote it. He was, Jeremiah's like, what? hey, you know what? The Holy Spirit just made me say this. And there's been a lot of inspiration in my ministry that I've said things out of the Holy Spirit that nobody's recorded. I mean, like, years after I did, the Lord tarried. Hey, you know, Stiley says something. Let's come up with the book of Stiley and we'll write down what we think he said. Because they'll say, you know what? We were at the flea market, and I heard a man say something about Jesus. Well, I'll tell you what he said. I'll write it and we'll put it. That's not true. That's not correct. And the other books, and I know you've heard of these. Stay away from them. First and second Maccabees. Now that is history. 
But that does not, that conflicts the Bible. You lay the two apart and they don't agree. Sort of like laying the Book of Mormon with the, with the Bible. Don't agree. I mean, the Book of Mormon says that there are Indian tribes in America that they can never find. There are cities in America they've never found and never going to find. And then Bell and the Dragon. And again, that's supposed to be an offshoot of Daniel and Babylon. And these are the books of the Old Testament. Again, there's the Torah. That's the five books of Moses, the teaching. And they will open up the Torah. They, if you hear them say, you know, if you hear a Jewish guy say, you know, we've read the law of Moses today. Shock and say, well, was it Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, or Deuteronomy? And you, you will blow him out of the water as a Gentile. Where'd you get that? Or if you want to, have you read the Torah today? What did the law say? And you'll, you'll, the Gentiles don't think we know this stuff. And then let me go to the prophet. Jesus said the Lord, the prophets, the Navin, or Navin, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and then the minor prophets, what we call the nine prophets. So Ron is reading in the Navi. You want to be smart. You want to show how much you know. I'll read in the Navi. Yeah. But it's not to say how smart we are. It's to say, hey, okay, now when I read the Law and the Prophets, I know exactly where I am now. I'm in the Old Testament. Now we know, like the Prophets, the Twelve. We know one of the Twelve is Jonah. Is there a book called Jonah? Go ask a scholar. Is there a book? They'll tell you no. Or they will tell you, they'll tell you the book of Jonah is fiction. They don't believe the book of Jonah. And yet I have one man named Jesus Christ that said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Jesus confirmed Jonah. What we just read, go back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Is there an Isaiah? Is there a Malachi? Verse 21. Are thou Elias? Well, we just read in Malachi. Didn't we just read that God says, I'm going to send Elijah before the great and coming day? What are they looking for? They're looking for Elias. You know where they got that from? They got that from the Navi, the prophet. Okay, now, you just rightly divide your Bible by learning what we just learned today. So when you read the book of Mo Moses, is simple. It's like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The prophets, well, that's the major, I mean, what we call the major, we call them the major and the minor prophets. I don't know why we do it, but we did. Just say, hey, the prophets, that's the major guy. That's also the minor guy. And anything else in the King James Bible or in our Bible, that's called the poetic book. Poetic. And you will find your division, you'll find where you are when you're reading the Bible. I know where I am. And we also know by these statements, by what we read today, and that by uh, Philip going to the town. And we read in the scriptures, we read that Paul had the Navin, Paul had the Torah. He says, out of those books, I witnessed to the Jews in Rome. And guess what I told them from the Torah, and guess what I told them from the Navin or the prophets? It speaks about Jesus. Now, here's one thing I'm taught. I agree with, I agree with it 100%. Let me tell you, number one, I have found it to be true. Every chapter of your Bible, look for Jesus. He's there, somewhere. If you have not found him, don't worry. Maybe later God will reveal it to you. But I have been told he's in every chapter. I believe that. Have I found him in every chapter? No. But he's definitely in every book of the Bible. I have been told every verse of the Bible to find Jesus. I believe that, but I have not found that. But just because of my ignorance, I'm not going to say it. This whole book is about Jesus. Remember John 1.1? 1, 1? 
in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. This whole thing is about... Listen, it's not about a Christian getting saved. But Paul only wrote, what, seven churches? It's not about the nation of Israel, and though it is. From the time of Genesis 3.15, we are told the prophecy of the coming of the Messiah since man has sinned. And even that, Genesis 1.3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. We read in John chapter 1 that Jesus is that light. This whole book from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 is all about one man. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and to be particular, Jesus Christ. What I just taught you today is when you're reading the New Testament, there are three divisions in the Old Testament, and it can help you. So, if it's said in the prophets, don't go looking in, in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, or Psalms, or that's not where we're at. Think of the minor or the major prophets. And it's, it's so simple. Let me get these papers up and blown away. Like I said, my spell checker told me afterwards. Did not spell the apocryphal. Then again, who wants to know how to spell that? That's a Catholic edition, by the way, anyway. You keep that right along with your Bible. It'll help you out. And I gave you a little Jewish and Hebrew Hebrew words today, Lauren. Oh, thank you. So you know a little Hebrew. And you know an important Hebrew, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's another Jewish person. And like I said, you can look online or you, at the library. You can look at the Jewish people. Their Old Testament is divided, different from ours. Our Bible ends with Malachi. We saw that today. It ends with a curse. You know what the last words of Chronicles in the, in the Hebrew Bible is? The Old Testament Hebrew Bible, they read the same Go back to Jerusalem. Check it out. Second Chronicles, the very last verse. It's telling them, go back to Jerusalem. You know what their command in their Bible says today? Go back to Jerusalem. You know what they're not doing? Going back to Jerusalem. I just, that deals with Elijah. Lord willing, next week we're going to look at the man Elijah. And who he is. Okay, we're going to do great detail. Like I said, I'm in no hurry to hurry John because there is so much in between John and the chapters. Any questions? Problems? Right.